ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome to the lab again, uh, coming into Python. Um, the last time that we actually did some analysis, uh, we basically did a classification model that's based on hypertension and the grouping, uh, depending on which patient, you know, and basically focusing more so on um, heart rate, um, basically uh, characterizing in groups to see like which heart rate is more efficient, and which is not. Um, to basically um, dictate who has hypertension, who doesn't, and who has a higher chance of survival. In this case, we are dealing with a regression problem here, where the difference between the two in classification modeling, we have a modeling where you have the task of predicting a discrete class label in that data set, right? Regression is basically um, the task of predicting a continuous quantity coming on in that current model, which is what we will be currently doing um, today, right? So these are the things that we have to literally to hold to task um, when dealing with these types of models, whether or not to dictate it's either regression or it's binary what classification, or it could be multi-classification or binary classification, however it may be. Um, but these are the types that we will be dealing with um, when actually um, running the data sets and actually running the models on those data sets to actually get like a more efficient prediction. Right, so with that, as you can see, much of the stuff that we actually have loaded up, okay, much of it that you already saw um, on the classification mode on uh, hypertension data set on the last analysis video that I performed or multiple parts of videos that I actually, I, I've been performed. And again, uh, for um, many of you um, who have been listening or had, hadn't gotten the gist of the last part that I've discussed, we will be doing the machine learning part of heart failure. Um, it could be done in multiple parts, depending on like what section you actually get at it. I will definitely let you know on the title. And then on the next section, we will also be doing deep learning once the machine learning modeling is complete, right? So make sure we have that all fully set and done uh, when it comes um, to that modeling. Now, I wanna discuss a few um, questions, a um, few definitions before we go on certain models in order uh, for us to actually get like a good gist of what we're dealing with here, right? So the first definition I want to actually discuss is basically linear regression, right? It's basically like a very simple um, regressive model. But before we do that, we want to talk about regression, which we did the definition of, right? You're basically dealing with relationships of two variables, um, response and predictors, right? So that's what we're basically discussing. Um, so when it comes to linear regression, right, basically linear regression, um, is this, right? Linear regression is, um, basically, um, it's one of the most important widely used regression techniques basically known to man when it comes to the data science realm. It's very, very simple. It's very simplistic, easy to do, right? So it, it deals with a dependent variable, right? Um, respond predictors and then you got a response basically being in independent variables right so independent variables right you got your x values you have r being a number of predictors right and you get the linear relationship between y and x you know y equals mx plus b blah blah blah, blah right <laughs> so that's basically what linear regression is and they have a regression equation that's actually based off that as well as regression coefficients and we know they have an error rate when it comes um, to that create um, equation as well, right? And for more information, you can easily type up linear regression on Google, and they'll be able to um, discuss in further detail um, on that method, right? Now, other methods to actually deal with um, linear regression as well is basically the lasso method, right? Which is basically a linear regressive model, um, which is shortened for least absolute shrinkage and selection operator. Um, basically, it's a regression analysis technique in statistics and machine learning, um, which performs both variable selection and regularization in order to enhance the prediction accuracy and interpretability of the resulting statistical model, which was introduced in geophysics by um, Mr. Robert Tipsharani. Shout out to him, by the way. And it was originally formulated for linear regression models, right? And basically discusses the relationship to ridge regression as well as best subset selection, which and we discussed with ridge right or formerly known as Tikhonov regularization right um, basically name for Mr. Andre Tikhonov um, which was founded um, basically is useful to mitigate the problem of multi and linear regression which commonly occurs in models with large numbers of parameters 
In general, the method provides improved efficiency of parameter estimation problems in exchange for a tolerable amount of bias, um, where you deal with the bias variance trade-off, which leads us to a new method that we will actually be in, uh, will dig deep into, which is elastic net, right? Elastic net regularization, which is basically in the fitting of linear logistic regressive models when it comes to regression and classification. Elastic net method is a regularized regression method that linearly combines the L1 and L2 penalties of the lasso and Ritz methods. Um, basically, when you're dealing with um, taxicab metric, right? We have rectilinear distance, right? Where you have the norms with L1 and L2. Basically, you have been measured based in like a geometrical sense, right? When it comes to geometry. It's just like when you're dealing with maps, right? You're dealing with a map like, i.e., New York City or Manhattan, um, Chicago, Los Angeles. Basically trying to find the shortest path possible that a car could take between two intersections or, you know, two blocks around the borough, right? In an equation to the intersection's distance in taxicab geometry um, as compared with um, the displacements, right? So that's what elastic net basically is. Now... Um, what we will definitely be doing here, right, now that we got all the definitions out the way, let's try to actually run this data set that we have um, set up here. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, let's look into the data set here and see what we can get out of it. Um, let's go look into that data set right about now. Um, pardon the delay with the computer. It can be a little bit slow at times, but let's see what we get out of here. Let's load it up. Okay. Now, so I to load the, the data set up as we can see here, right? And bear with me, give it some time and define the file, right? Go to this little file section here, and then you find where the location is, and that's how you're able to receive the file. As long as you type in the R first, and then you put the location in where it's a Mac, usually it would be like a forward slash. If it's a Windows, it's a backward slash, and then you get your location in your portals. And that's how you're able to actually collect your data set and potentially do some analysis with it. So let's um, have this loaded up. Um, Y'all bear with me. Give me one second. All right, now it's loaded up. Now we need to see how big um, this data set is and get, get an idea. So let's see how um, big it is right now. So we have approximately 300 rows, um, 13 columns, you know, so from zero to 299, um, X, Y's, um, zero to 12, Y, Y's, you know, or Y, X, however it may be. And now we take to see the types to see what they are, whether or not they're float 64s or whether or not they're objects. So we'll run that. All objects, right? In order for the, the analysis to fully run, it has to be into uh, converted into floats in order for it to work. So what if we decide to convert it to float outright, right? And see what we get. So if we convert string to float and see what the outcome would be, what we get. Uh-oh. We have a word right there. Can't do it. So we're going to have to um, remove um, the top here and see what we could get. So if we look at the head, right, and see what we have and see how it's structured. So bear with me, please. All right, so top row, we have a bunch of words coming from the zero angle. This is the zero row that you see here. This is, this is like the zero row that you see with the words and everything. That's why it couldn't be fully converted. If you have text involved, that's why um, Python automatically recognizes this file set as an object. So we have to remove the top row. All right, let's take care of that right here. Get that out the way. You know, so far this is done. Now let's try to see what the outcome would be again. So basically these are the labels that you see above here. Um, for more information, I already have um, the Excel file already posted up on get on my GitHub under hard fill. You can find it there. Um, let's see if we could get the head again. All right, now we got everything all strictly numbers. So this is basically, um. This is basically a full goal to actually uh, run this and actually convert it to a float set. So let's convert it and see what we get. Boom. Right there. Right. So because we have to focus on the death event, which is actually the main um, response that we have to worry about in front of all these predictors. Right. Basically, we need to actually get a prediction on like um, 
mortality rates. So this is the main target right here, right? So we're just going to try and group by um, the mortality rate and see what type of outcomes we can get out of it, right? So zero, I'm assuming in some cases of machine learning, you know, zero basically means yes, one basically means no. So say if we go with the assumptions of um, these labels here, the zero basically means not going to make it. One basically means um, that person is basically going to survive. And this is some very tragic um, stat statistics that's actually um, going about. Even like if you have like one death, right, or one mentality um, that's uh, coming out of this data set is just extremely tragic. Because you just it's not just a number set. It's not just a data point. You're looking at a patient, you're looking at a human being, you're looking at families being involved, friends being involved, friends being affected by this ordeal that could be traumatized for life over this. You know what I'm saying? This is literally no laughing matter. So um, with that, let's try to dig real deep into the activity of each of these um, columns and, you know, these subsections and see like what the trends would be for each patient. So let's go run some histogram histograms on those, see what we get. All right. So... On the zero range, we're talking about the age here. Um, basically, we have a variety of patients that are of each numerical age that you see here. One is basically deals with anemia um, per column based on the activity. 12 mainly deals with the death rate, um, as we explained earlier, and you know the types here. And they have all these various columns that you could label um, per type. And again, you can look at the XLC for more information. Um, zero to 12 represents, um, the columns from left to right respectively. So for more information, actually dig deeper into that, uh, again, go to GitHub, please. And, uh, make sure you download that Excel sheet and dig more, um, details on it. Now let's focus on the scatter plot matrix here and see what we get. All right. See if there anything is like literally interesting on that at that point. Please bear with me. All right, because it's a very huge um, data set here, um, dealing with about a 13 by 13 matrix, um, about given the data set starting from zero to 12 and zero to 12 again, and you have all the various values and where they're going. It's just basically a bit jittery um, from what we have seen. Now let's focus on the correlation matrix that we have shown. All right, get that out the way. See what we can try to feel again and try to get a feel of it. Correlation matrix that you see there, you got 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 columns this way, 13 columns that way. Um, basically dealing with a binary matrix, yellow being all ones here, right? And you see the yellow most point is one, go all the way down with negative one, you know, purple being negative one. You'll find the estimated outcomes of each value that's within um, each section here. And now, we can finally get to have some fun with um, the validation data sets that we will be posting in a bit. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to split out the very validation data set. Um, so what we did, um, we generated an array of the data set values that are actually shown um, from the CSV file. And we generated um, basically some independent variables up on, our, on the top corner, which is X, having arrays coming from zero to 12 right basically going all the columns that are involved and then you have y here having um basically focusing more so on the death rates right validation size around 20 percent right and basically getting like 80 80 percent efficient rate 80 percent confidence interval um basically run to see about seven times to try and validate it and make sure it's like the most efficient and we got a bunch of number of folds um basically um getting everything set up around 10 times right um, through scoring of a negative mean square error. So we want to try and make sure that the error is extremely minimal as possible. So whichever um, method has the least um, mean square error, basically the least MSC, no, the ne negative mean MSC, um, that's going to be our winner. So let's go run this data set here and see what we get out of this. You know what I mean? And again, part of the computer is just loading a bit too slow with the memory. So Let's run this out, All right? Knock it out. All right, boom. We got it right, here. All right. So now 
we gotta try and make sure we spot check all the algorithms that we have discussed early on from uh, the previous video here and then we're gonna try and run some results and try and see um, which algorithm can uh, actually compare and show which one has the least um, negative mean square error so let's run those out and again all of the charts that are being shown will be on the github site and what we have um, been seeing and what we are seeing so far is um, linear regression all right coming into the league with the lowest um, NMSC right so that's basically uh, what we are focusing on now and if we look at lasso, it comes in second, right? So we see linear regression here. We see what the mean is, and then lasso is actually coming second as well. Elastic, you no, know, it's com actually coming third. Elastic thing is actually going to come in second. So we got some very, very interesting um, dynamic on how this is playing about when it comes to the original algorithm comparison. Now, let's see if we can standardize the data set and, 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 and incorporate a pipeline toward each right and see what type of results that we get so let's go run this guy as well okay same thing get everything scaled S scale linear regression so that's a lead um, negative 0.147983 you got you guys can definitely see the values here right basically currently have the lead at that point um, elastic net is all the way off um, you know what I mean so Oh, one more thing. It's very interesting. Um, supporting vector machines, right? Come with a negative um, 0.17, right? So it's coming close to linear regression here. So ladies and gentlemen, we do want to focus on here is um, linear regression, lasso. Actually, linear regression, there's no need to um, make any tweaks. But my main concern is the last hyperparameters as well as the supporting vector machines, have a parameter so let's go focus on lasso first and see what we get here all right and we had some um tweaks up here where we involve the k fold and get all the grids that are actually set up and then you get the mean test score SES score and get the parameters involved and let's see the outcome it's gonna get it's definitely gonna take some time all right so far what we have found here right so the best method that they have shown um, with uh, the mean standard deviation parameters, um, they have the alpha method that's actually shown with lasso, um, basically comes out to a negative um, 0.316455. And actually they test it out each method that's actually been shown as you can see below, or all the way down. Now let's see if we can tune the support and vector machines. Let's see if we can try to knock that out and run that. Boom. <laughs> so far all right boom, boom, boom. now we have um, the outcome of negative um, 0.175362 using the C value of 2 and kernel and sigmoid and here's what they have with the labels that are actually shown with um, supporting vector high parameters but yet the one with the least um, the one with the least um, and then man, see it's still linear regression so far. Now let's go incorporate some ensembles here and see what we can get out of this. And then we can try to compare it. See what we can get. Let's run it. All right, so so far, so so far, what we have some um, statistically, we got a uh, ADA boost um, coming in at negative point one five six, um, gradient boosting method coming in at negative point one five, um, random force coming in at negative point one four four, um, extra trees right coming in at a negative point one three two, as well as uh, nave bays coming in as a negative um, two point five. Four. So we got some big shockers here. And if we look at those graphs, we find out that extra trees actually wins. 
right? So let's see what we can get when it comes to extra trees, right? So let's go focus on extra trees. So we got like, they got like a negative um, 0.132. That's the one that has the least um, negative um, mean square error. So let's focus on that. Let's see what we can get. Yeah, bear with me, please. It's going a little bit slow. I'm trying to try and make sure I get. Um, basically, I can get all these labels out there. All right, so let's focus on extra trees and see what we can get. And um, if we can knock this guy out. And uh, again, I apologize for the delay with the computer. Now bear with me now. Get the extra trees regression in there. Get that out the way. Knock this out. So let's see if we can knock this guy out and see what we can get. All right, let's run it. Let's run this guy right here. Boom. All right. So far, so good. Now let's see if we can get the validation set up and see what the mean squared error would be. So let's try to run it. All right, the mean squared error um, that has been shown is has a value of 0 0.068528, you know, and the rest of the numbers um, that are actually does fourth. So overall, in closing, Extra trees, um, the extra trees aggressive model would be the best fit um, to actually make a prediction on the death rate um, tragically on a patient. And let me try to make this clear again. When dealing with these types of statistics um, and that data set, you know, they're not just numbers. They are people with families. There are families that are affected um, by loved ones that actually go through heart failure daily. And basically, um, People like us basically like make those predictions to try and let doctors know about the matter so that they could try to improve on medicine to try and keep people alive and try to prolong their lives as long as they can. So, you know, it's, it's a very unfortunate situation. It's a very tragic at the same time, you know, when dealing with these things. But we want to try and actually give people um, the importance um, when it comes to dealing with heart failure the whole nine yards and how serious this stuff is. Now that we got all the machine learning um, aspects out the way, we will be doing another section of deep learning coming up um, in the next section um, to come. Well, we will be able to discuss in further detail about deep learning modeling on the whole nine yards with this same data set and how we basically can use deep learning to see it to basically predict actually and trying to see whether or not that model is basically um, high efficiency um, on that data set here. So. Y'all take care. I'm about to go to bed, you know, see you on the next one.